What is up guys, Technicals here coming at you with something a little bit different today. Today we're going to be exploring risk versus reward over the various types of mining strategies. Today we're only going to be looking at four, and I encourage anyone watching to list in the comments below some alternative mining strategies or ones that we missed. On the Technicals, let's get into it. The Technicals. So things are looking up for cryptocurrency and cryptocurrency mining. Profits are slowly starting to make their way back up as the markets go back up. And so when it comes to mining, a lot of people start out with something that's super easy like NiceHash, which is one of the ones that we're going to be going over today. We're also going to be exploring other methods of mining strategies that include going with an auto-switching pool, going with direct altcoin mining, and then also mining highly speculative coins directly. And in order to illustrate those, we're going to be taking a look at a super subjective risk profile graph. Look at this graph! Alright, so here we are with our graph. I guess it's more like a chart. I should probably have made a chart, but I couldn't use the Nickelback meme. Anyway, super subjective risk profile chart or graph. What we're going to be doing here is taking a look very basically at these four types and my determination on their risk reward profile. Again, if you think this is wrong or you think we missed something, type it below in the comments because engagement's engagement. Go to town down there. I don't care. It also absolves me of criticism because I asked for your feedback. So anyway, we're going to be taking a look first at reward and it basically goes up the scale on the amount of work required. Something like NiceHash doesn't require much of any type of work and something like direct speculative coin mining requires probably the most amount of work. So many new miners when they come in they go to something like NiceHash because it's very easy to get started. You just download the client, it benchmarks all your hardware and you start mining right away. Another benefit to NiceHash is that it's automatically switching you into Bitcoin which is the largest, safest, most uh, reserviest currency that there is. You don't really have to worry as much about Bitcoin uh, going through the floor like many of the small altcoins. But for that ease of use you pay for it because you're going to be paying fees. There's also the uh, possibility of a hack. We all know NiceHash got hacked in late 2017 and they're still paying back the victims of that hack. Now is it as likely to happen with NiceHash again? I hope not. I think that the security is probably beefed up. They also have a lot of eyes on NiceHash. A lot of people looking at NiceHash on a day-to-day -day basis to make sure they're doing things above board. But because ultimately you're switching into that higher reserve currency, you're not going to be realizing those gains if you're in the mine and hold type camp. Let's move on to our next one, automatic switching pools. Switching pools like Mining Pool Hub and some other ones are going to require a more advanced configuration. You're going to have to point your miner specifically at that pool. But once it's there, the pool is going to be doing the switching on the back end and converting whatever coin that you're currently mining, whatever your hardware is most efficient at mining, into whatever coin that you want. Many pools will only do large cap stuff like Bitcoin, but many other types of pools like Pro Hashing or Mining Pool Hub can switch into other types of coins as well. But again, as we move up the risk profile, the risks get riskier. We know that some pools in the past have been guilty of skimming. That's where they take a portion of your hash rate and mine uh, to their benefit with it. Or they just take a portion of your payout coins and keep a very small amount over time to try to reap the maximum reward. You also run the risk of the pool just shutting down, closing up shop out of nowhere. We saw that with a few pools this past year as mining profits went down and miners left. Many pools just closed up shop and left. Now some of them did issue the final payouts and some went away. There's also less oversight on these pools because you don't have as many people mining to them. You don't have as many sets of looking balls looking at them to make sure they do things right. So you're taking a risk by going to these uh, auto switching type pools but your reward profile could be a little bit higher. And that's because you're able to convert into the coin that you want. If you believe that a certain coin is going to have more upside than another coin, then that's ultimately your determination. But if you convert it into a coin with a lot of upside that your hardware can't really mine all that well, then you could be seeing a lot more profits. Next, we move from auto switching into direct mining type strategies. The first being mining higher cap altcoins, things like Ravencoin, Vertcoin, anything in say the top 150 coins by market cap, mining those directly. It's going to require more configuration, so you're going to be uh, exerting more time, more effort in order to mine these coins. You're also not going to have the flexibility of switching back and forth to anything that's more profitable at that time. You're going to be committed to that one specific coin. 
So this increases your complexity. This is going to, going to burn up more time and ultimately more labor cost, opportunity cost, and resources. However, if in your determination the coin that you are mining it has a higher potential for upside, then you could potentially make a lot more rewards. Something like Bitcoin, it's unlikely to go 10 or 20 or 50 times its current value. However, many of these smaller yet higher cap altcoins could very well go to that multiple. So you're going to want to do your research into whatever coin that you're mining or at least have the strategy of mining these specific coins in the short term swing mining so to speak and selling them uh, in a relatively small interval. And finally the highest risk, highest reward is going to be the daily chase. That's when you're looking at brand spanking new coins that just came out just announced on Bitcoin Talk, just launched, you get in, when the difficulty is low, you mine the hell out of it, and you get out. Ultimately, that is the name of the game, in my opinion, when you're doing speculative mining. And so the strategy here is to cast a wide net, mine a lot of these brand new speculative coins. Maybe you take them through a few sets of filters that sort of give you uh, some reassurances that they aren't going to immediately fold. Maybe they don't have as much gimmick. Maybe they have good technology and good fundamentals. Whatever the case may be, you mine these coins again very early on. You hold the bag and you wait for them to go up. You're casting a lot of dice with very cheap uh, entries to roll those dice over and over again. That's the name of the game with speculative mining. Because otherwise, if you spend a lot of time researching the fundamentals, the technology, the team, on and so on and so forth, you're going to spend your entire goddamn day looking at coins because so many coins come out. Even now, even while the Bitcoin and cryptocurrency markets are depressed, less coins are coming out, still lots and lots of coins come out, and it's difficult to pass them through a filter good enough to really isolate the, the ones that have a lot of potential. And so your risk here with the daily chase is going to be a very high chance that the coin folds. Most of them are going to fold. They're going to collapse or they were scams from the get-go. And now we like to think that we can target and isolate these pretty good. But people are clever. People have been doing this. Many of the scams that are run are run by the same people who have run scams over and over again. So they're getting better at putting up these scams, putting up a facade that looks like a legitimate project. And when you go into mine it, they get it as far as putting it on an exchange to when they dump it. And most importantly, it requires a tremendous amount of work researching these coins. I said it before, I'll say it again. There's a reason I got out of mining. I go on and on and on about it. I know I feel like a broken record. Everybody looks to examples like Ethereum, like how great it must have been to mine several hundred Ethereum in the opening weeks, sit on it, and now during the, the, the height would have been worth many tens, hundreds, millions of dollars. Uh, that would have been great, but it's unlikely to happen. It's like rolling the dice at a casino. Most of the time, you are going to lose. But the rolls are very cheap because you have hardware that you can switch back and forth rapidly onto these new coins and so it makes sense to just mine a whole bunch of them and sometimes some of them stick sometimes some of them don't we saw here over the past year Rido coin and Suka coin both did okay and we got on those pretty quickly however they're not really top tier winners they're not in terms of market cap exploding and I don't see a real reason that they should however that doesn't matter because if the value of them went up and you mined a whole bunch in the beginning then you could be sitting pretty pretty and that one week worth of mining could be worth several tens of thousands of dollars today so in the end what's the sweet spot which one should we go for I think that probably a lot of people overlook things like nice hash and like kudo miner uh, mainly because of the fees or because they feel that mining the coins directly is somehow better. But really that's an advanced stage thing and I don't think that just because you're advanced you really need to gravitate towards those for any reason, especially if you're busy with other things. Mining on something like NiceHash or Kudo Miner is stone cold easy. It's really, really easy. Kudo Miner did not pay me for this and yes, I've done other Kudo Miner videos. I think it's a great option. I think Kudo Miner is a, a, a great platform. they got a great marketing strategy and a great growth strategy. See link in the description below to sign up for Kudo Miner using my link. I get like a pen per year or something like that so yeah paid shill I think that you need to explore all the options become well versed in all aspects of cryptocurrency mining both GPU FPGA ASIC CPU so on and so forth but if you're gonna fall in with GPU mining which is where most people are at least the people that are watching this video I say don't rule out things like nice hash and kudo miner I think you gotta look at the risk versus reward how much time do you want to spend researching and chasing these coins day to day, week to week, month to month, year to year. How much time could you put into researching other projects, maybe non-mineable projects that are really, really good, uh, but you don't go for because you can't mine them. Maybe that would make sense to do a little bit of both back and forth. I just, um, the purpose of this video, and I guess the message that I'm trying to convey is to not limit yourself to one particular thing. 
keep falling in line with these highly speculative coins. I know that previously in the channel, we said that mining was becoming a speculative game, and it really is. However, there comes a point where it doesn't make sense to go off and try to mine Suka coin and Rito coin and help the homeless and all these other weird coins that come out because what kind of upside do you really have? If there's another more advanced strategy or something that we missed out on here or points to the existing strategies that we highlighted in this video, let me know in the comments below. Tell me how I'm wrong. Tell me how I'm right. I don't care. I love the engagement. Go, 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 go. For links to stuff we talked about here today, see description below for links and be sure to like the video because that helps. That's the only reason I'm here. Like the video, subscribe, turn on notifications because that's important too. Once again, I'm the Technicals. See you next time. Time.